Need for Speed The Run was Black Box's final nail in the coffin. Shortly after the run's release, the studio got shut down by EA. Then the franchise was taken over by Criterion and Ghost Games. And the rest is history. Similarly to the first Underground, Black Box tried to make something new. The run had a bunch of really cool ideas. However, the execution just missed the mark. <laughs> Especially when we compare it to the other racing games from 2011. The competition just blew the run out of the water. Recently the game has got more love than ever before, which is great. <laughs> but for now, let's just focus on the story. The whole game is a giant cannonball-like race, broken up into small parts. So if you hate sprint races, this game will do wonders for you. We learn from the loading screen that the protagonist is called Jack Rourke, who is a driver. Some say he's the best, and he's about to be murdered, because he couldn't repay his debt to the mob, and he's looking for a way out. That's some low-effort character introduction, but it gets better, trust me. Jack slowly wakes up tied to the steering wheel of red Porsche that is about to be dropped into a compactor while the bad guys are watching his suffering. It's not a pleasant situation to be in, but it's certainly not the worst. I know a weirdo who cuffs himself to steering wheels and he's just doing fine. So the Porsche gets dropped into the machine and by smashing the right buttons in a quick time event, Jack is able to jump out of the compactor and hops into a very nice silver Audi. The mob is not letting us get away that easy. So be prepared, because they use everything they can, even random crashes. Thanks to an oncoming train, we escape and move on to San Francisco to rendezvous with Sam Harper. According to her bio, she made tons of money betting on Jack in the past and she's ready to take advantage of him once more. What caught my eye is the final line in her bio. Victory for Jack solves both their problems. Exactly. What problems does Sam have? For real. Just look at her. She's classy. Maybe I'm making a terrible assumption, but she looks loaded as hell. Anyway, Jack meets her at a restaurant, where Sam offers to help him deal with the mob, and he blindly agrees. Right now. Yes or no? You knew the answer before I even walked to the door. The only thing he needs to do is to win a giant race from San Francisco to New York. If he succeeds, Sam pays off his debt and he gets an additional 10% cut. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 10%? The purse is 25 million. Do the math. Sam pays the enormous 250k entrance fee. Then we are given a tablet with the race's route. This little device will be also used to keep in touch with Sam. Now we have to get you a car. Cars. I got covered. <laughs> sure. And we jump to four hours later, when the race is about to start. Jack? You ready? Locked and loaded. We arrive at the starting line, and the race is finally on, baby. Let's go! Jack, you have to get to Las Vegas in the top 150. You've heard it. We need to hurry up, otherwise we'll be eliminated first from the race, then from existence. There are 10 stages in total, with occasional rival races. We saw some of these rivals in the restaurant earlier. Before we take on them, we can read about their backstories and such. And the game is trying hard to make them likable, which is kinda stupid. After all, all of these characters are criminals. Jack, Sam, the organizers, the other 200 racers, even the chef from earlier. Just give the cat some food, man. She's hungry. And let's not forget that these guys already paid 250k in cash to join the race. So they're actually better off than like 90% households worldwide. And they want us to feel sorry for them? Ah, uh, nah man. Back to the race. After leaving San Francisco, we meet the main villain, Marcus Blackwell. This cheeky fucker is the one who wanted to kill Jack in the beginning. His uncle is the mob boss in Chicago, and he is trying everything to sabotage our progress. Before arriving to Las Vegas, we learn that Jack is a gambling addict. Oh, and Jack? Yeah. No casinos. There you crossed my mind. And we are about to have our first rival race, facing two friends, Mila and Nikki. I'm seriously worried for these girls, because Jack acts like a total weirdo when they're around. Bro, why is this cutscene so long? <laughs> Jack, 
Jesus Christ, this guy is a creep. So, after beating them fair and square, Sam tells that we need to be in the top 50 when we get to Chicago. Great. From here, the game throws literally everything at us. Bad cops, hungry creatures, traffic, plus a lorry driver from a dead franchise. Did you hear that? I swear, that's Donald Duck. After the mess we made in Vegas, Jack goes top of the police wanted list. To lose the heat for a while, he rushed through Utah, then head into the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. This is probably the most iconic part of the game. Racing through the Independence Pass is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And let's not forget the rival race against Caesar and his brothers. These fellas spent almost a mil just to take part in the race. <laughs> but apparently, they are trying to give their families a better life. I guess moving from LA to Bel Air would be an improvement. Beating these guys means we can move on to the Midlands to beat a retired boxer. Calvin got it, beat a boxer, he could have easily made a bank if he'd accepted a fight against Jake Paul or something. Instead, he went for the worst possible option, respect. As we are getting close to Chicago, Sam calls us to drop some juicy info. And Jack, I just got word. The mob has a welcoming committee waiting for you downtown. Thanks for the heads up. Seriously, don't let your guard down. Not for a second. Didn't know you cared. First of all, of course she cares. She wants that sweet 25 mil, not a body bag labeled Jack. Second, don't act like you got the chance. She has other preferences. Third, watch the goddamn road you muppet. <laughs> What's good is that we get into the top 50. What's bad is that the mob in Chicago goes absolutely nuts. We don't get a single minute to chill. We'll be constantly changing cars and use Jack's matrix moves to get by. Listen, Jack, no race is worth your life. We can stand down if Nobody's you standing down. Until Jack stumbles upon the mighty silver Audi again to bring justice once and for all. They finish the mob's associates one by one and get an achievement for taking down their heli. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Audi gets damaged, therefore Jack asks Sam to help him out. I need new wheels, now! Okay. Go see a man named Yuri on 4th and Industrial. We don't know much of this Yuri guy, except that he listens to absolute bangers. Yuri! And he has a nice cat. <coughs> Easy, Chepchenko. He's a friend. So... We choose a supercar of his to continue the race. Since we lost a good amount of time escaping from Chicago, we have to beat our rivals again, starting with Mila, then a new fella, Eddie. He has the lamest reason for being here. He's lacking sponsorship deals. <laughs> you can't make this up. <laughs> if only he'd been sponsored by NordVPN or Raid Shadow Legends, then he wouldn't need to be here. When we are done, Sam hypes us up for the finals. Bring it home, Jack. I'll see you in Manhattan. Yeah, let's do it. We beat Caesar. And just a sec, I can't finish the game in this car. There we go. Much better. We take over Calvin and reach New York City to face our final enemy, Marcus. After Marcus makes a couple mistakes, he politely asks Jack to go on an alternative route underground. The finish line is at the docks, so it's not gonna change the outcome in any meaningful way. After making some spicy moves, Marcus realizes he's gonna lose against a car held together by duct tape, but thus he rage quits. Damn, we lost a good man. What matters is the run is finally over. We won. Yay! Eight hours later, we meet Sam in a coffee shop. She has already freed Jack by paying the mob and put his cut in a deposit box. The conversation ends with Sam offering Jack an opportunity to take part in another high stake race, using Jack's weakness to her own benefit again. If you're interested in doubling down, I just got a call. 
That's an offer Jack can't refuse, since he hasn't changed a bit since the beginning. He is still addicted to the same things that almost got him killed multiple times. Gambling and illegal racing. The game ends with Jack racing, while the cops are chasing him. How's it going down there? Having a good time, Jack? There's no place I'd rather be.